Uh, the Precious Blood Center is a blessing because it's giving these young youth hope, strength, and courage to try to keep them off the streets from doing wrong. And I'm just so, so grateful. And so you can always come to the Precious Blood Center and they'll help you with your problems. When I first heard about the center, when I was going through my little juvenile phase, and you guys always used to come up to the uh, Audi home and always try to get people to come here. Like, I just wasn't in that right mindset. Not until I got a little bit older. I decided to come up here one time. So I decided to stick it out and see what was really going on here. And everything that you all talked about there, like, as far as like God, um, things that young black men are able and supposed to do, you, it, it, it fit you. So I stuck around, did a few circles, and eventually found a job working with my man, Mike. And <laughs> what that happened to me is that the center helped me change my way of thinking, um, helped me to get rid of the old friends that I used to hang around with. I didn't even contact them no more. Just made me a better person, period. They gave me a job, put money in my pocket. It's important to keep me off the streets. I'm still alive, so I'm happy for that. The, the life I was living was crazy. Like, I, I got shot. I was jumped on and got put in the hospital. And, of course, like, I'm going to say, of course, like, selling drugs, doing all that stuff. But, and with the help of you guys, I didn't just want to sit around like just smoking weed. Y'all just helped me see everything that I need to become a man is what I was supposed to do. I just can't quit on myself. And yes, I'm, I'm still working. Like that's, that's my biggest thing. I have to have a job because if I don't have a job, then it's over. <laughs> like it's not funny, but basically it's over. I know what I'm gonna do. I know what I did when I didn't have the little money that was coming in, the, the job, the, the place to go to when I didn't have anything else to do. So, yeah. We're here at Precious Blood. We're doing uh, one of our monthly circle keeper training. We really love being at Precious Blood because it's a place that's so warm and hospitable and people who come to the training always feel very welcome here. Um, we've trained probably in this time about 750 people. Their teachers, their students, their parents, their community advocates, their probation officers, police, judges, gang members, um, you name it, we've trained people, people from the religious communities. Um, and what they do is afterwards they take 
their training and they go out and they do circles at school or in their communities or at their churches and the schools they do it. They can do staff meetings, they can do um, circles with their students, they can do celebration circles, they can do healing circles, grieving circles. Um, because the circles help us to, to see ourselves in one another. When stories are shared in a circle, no matter how great the difference is, People see themselves in one another, some part of it. We've been really fortunate over the years to have, to have Kay Pranis, who really is one of the premier trainers, writers, and practitioners in the field of restorative justice, to be a person that comes to Chicago to support us in our work around peacemaking circles. As part of the Precious Blood Ministry, Kay Pranis has been an invaluable support with helping us to grow in our practice, to really understand what restoration and peacemaking is all about, but more, over, more than that, to really understand what relationships and love and gratitude and friendship really are. I like the phrase, moving into the possibilities, particularly related to circles. What possibilities do circles help us to live that are otherwise really hard for us sometimes. The thing that came to mind for me was the idea that we all belong to each other, but we have trouble living as if we belong to each other. And circles help us to live as if we belong to one another. With the help of the center, I yeah, met a lot of people I probably wouldn't have met. Their stories, the things they've been through, even though their life may be different, everybody got problems. I feel like there's a sense of, you know, more hope. Things just don't get better overnight also. I learned that, so be patient. So in the circle, we share stories. We see ourselves in one another. We feel when another person is going through some strong emotions, we can feel those emotions too and, and we, we connect, we can connect at the emotional level, we can connect at the spiritual level, we can connect at the, the mental level and sometimes we join hands and connect at the physical level and all, in all of those connections we begin to live into that possibility of how deeply we belong to one another that we belong to one another so deeply that we're in great pain when we're disconnected. The enormous pain of disconnection, which all of us have experienced in small and large ways in different parts of our lives, that that pain comes because we know, we know at the cellular level that we need to belong to one another, that we need to hold others and they need to hold us hold us in our pain, to hold us in our joy. And I came to Precious Blood Ministry because uh, I had a son. His name was Cornelius. And before he passed, because yes, he's passed, Sister Donna and Father Kelly, they were sort of mentoring him. And when he passed, they were here for me. They, I talked to them, I vent with them, I, I just relieved so much pressure with them. When I needed them, they were there for me. They, they helped me through the transition of me losing my baby. His name was Cornelius. And since I've been coming here, um, it's, it's been great because we sit around, young ladies or mothers, we sit around and we talk about how we feel about our sons being incarcerated or our son being lost to street violence. It's Father Kelly and Sister Donna, Sister Carolyn and, and Sarah, they, they, they talk to you, they talk with you, they listen to you, they help you get through whatever pain you're going through, they help you get through it. And they have been so good to me. They have been good not only to me, but they have been good to my family. They come, they open their arms to you, and it's like when you walk in the building, you know you're walking into a great big hug. And I just want to thank the Precious Blood Ministries for all the help and all the love they have shown me throughout my whole ordeal. I mean, and I'm going to continue to come here, and whoever I can help, with them helping me, is helping me help others. So with their guidance, I, um, I guess you can say, I'm helping people because they are helping me. 
and, and, and it's just a wonderful feeling. They make me glow and it show. <laughs>